Let's get into the Word of God. Um, today, I want to talk about something that's not talked about very much. Servanthood. Everybody say servanthood. Servanthood. Servanthood is the key to promotion. Everybody say servanthood, servanthood. is the key to promotion. Now, servanthood is a biblical concept. If you do a Google search on the word servanthood, a bunch of biblical references will show up because it's not talked about in day-to-day -day conversations, okay? But it is the key to promotion, and it's a very overlooked key. Now, there are all sorts of things that people look at to try to get promoted. All kinds of things that people will try to do to move up the corporate ladder and, and, and get promoted. Some people will do ir immoral and illegal things to get promoted. There are ladies who will sacrifice their body, have sex, just to, just to get a position. See? And um, do you know we're all servants? We are all, first of all, servants of God. However, God places other people in our life that we need to serve. Like our pastor. Like our pastor. Uh, our, our employer. Okay? And many people are missing promotion in their life. Listen to me because they don't serve with the right attitude. They don't serve their church with the right attitude, the leaders in their church, people in positions of authority in their church, people on the job and they're saying negative things about their boss, which you should never do. Christians should be the best workers on the job. In Matthew, there's a story of um, the mother of James and John, her name was Salome. And she went with James and John, went to, to, into Jesus' presence with a private meeting, and she had a request. She said, look, it was a special request. She said, grant that my two sons sit in a place of honor in you, when, when we get to your kingdom, one on the right hand and one on the left. And Jesus said, among other things, he said, that decision is not mine to make. Now, when the other ten disciples heard about it, they were upset. Okay? And they might have said stuff like, man, who y'all think you are? We with Jesus just like you are. Why do you think you get to sit on, right next to him? So Jesus chilled them out. And in verse 25, he called them together. He said, you know that the rulers in this world lorded over their people and officials flaunt their authority over those under them. You know people like that in the world? Flaunting their authority around, trying to be big shots. Some people will let you know they're in charge. You know I'm the boss. Hallelujah. Well, Jesus said, but among you it will be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. Now, this is a very strange message because, again, some people, they're doing the wrong things to try to get promoted. And this right here is really the key. It's really very simple. He said, among you, it'll be different. I pray that among us, it'll be different. We'll be different in the world. We're not going to try to climb on top of people's back to move up. But we're going to move up, and I'm going to show you how it's so simple. Among you, it'll be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first among you must become your slave. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. All right? We need to have an attitude of servanthood. 
it is the key to promotion. Hebrews 13, 17 from the Message Bible, this is very powerful. This has to do with uh, submission to your pastor. Be responsive to your, your pastoral leaders and also includes uh, any pastors and actually the same principle applies to authority under the pastor, people who the pastor places in authority. Be responsive to your pastoral leaders. Listen to their counsel. They are alert to the condition of your lives and work under the strict supervision of God. Contribute to the joy of their leadership. This is probably not one of your favorite scriptures, but it is one of mine. <laughs> but this is something for you to do, not for me to do. Hello. <laughs> Contribute to the joy of their leadership, not its drudgery. Why? Everybody say why. why? Read the rest of that with me. Why would you want? Uh-oh. We don't have those scriptures up here, do we? Okay. Well, praise the Lord. Why would you want to make things harder for them? I'm going to read it again since you don't have that up there. This is Hebrews 13, 17 from the Message Bible. Be responsive to your pastoral, pastoral leaders. Listen to their counsel. They are alert to the condition of your lives and work under the strict supervision of God. Contribute to the joy of their leadership, not as drudgery. Why would you want to make things harder for them? Don't make things hard for your pastor. Now, this is talking about ministry authority, but the same principle applies to any authority. Submission is not a bad word. When we talk about submission to authority, um, submission, when you have good leadership, see, submission is a response to an initiating action. And it's never demanded or forced. Submission is voluntary. And when you have good leaders, you should want to submit to them. And something about submission, you find out, you don't find out whether you submiss, you're submissive or not until you're asked to do something that you don't want to do. It's easy to submit to something you agree with. All right? Anybody can do things they agree with. But how do you do when you're asked to do something you don't agree with? Do you do it with a willing heart and a good attitude? And it's important to be both faithful and loyal. Faithful and loyalty are two different things. They don't mean the same thing. See, a good servant is both faithful and loyal. See, you can be faithful without being loyal. Some people are obedient and will even do things they don't agree with because their end game is to get promoted or to move up the ladder, and they're willing to do whatever it takes to get there. Don't, listen, don't ever compromise your principles or do immoral things to get promoted. Let God reward you. Well, what if I, I don't really understand, I don't understand everything that the leadership is asking me to do. Well, comprehension is not a prerequisite for cooperation. Amen. That's a line from the matrix. As a servant, see, you don't hear this word kicked around a lot. But if you have a boss, anybody have a boss on the job? You're to serve them. Oh, I'm not their servant. Well, you, yes, you are. You, you're to serve them. And so you want to always understand everything. Do your part and do what the Bible says. Mind your own business. How that person runs that company is not your business. Don't try to run an organization where you're not the head. God did not place you in that position. Therefore, it's none of your business 
how things are done. You can give your input whenever you ask, but if not, work there quietly without complaining. You may have a preference, and that's okay, as long as it, as, as long as it doesn't conflict with their preference. It's okay to voice your opinion, but if your leader decides he's going to do it another way and not use your idea, be okay with it. Be a team player and run with the leader's decision like it was your own. Be a sheep when it comes to local church. Follow local church leadership and be sheep. Sheep follow. Goats buck. Be a sheep and not a goat. See, when you're a goat, you, you make it difficult for a pastor. We go back to Hebrews 13. Contribute to the joy of my leadership. Why do you want to make things hard for me? I'm not talking, about, talking to you. I'm talking to the goats. <laughs> Why y'all want to make things hard for me? Praise the Lord. Now, people with a know-it-all attitude do not grow. See, if you don't learn how to be a servant, you won't get promoted. And sometimes your pastor will see things you don't see. The pastor sees things sometimes that you don't see. He sees the big picture. You see a part. He sees the whole. You see a small part. See? And I'm not talking about following somebody blindly. Now, if you're following somebody that's putting you, even on a job or in any situation, and you're serving under somebody that's putting you in a compromising situation or asking you to do something illegal or immoral, that's something different. Get out of that situation. Okay? Or if you feel like the leadership you're under is not the right leadership for you and the Lord is leading you to leave, leave quietly, and don't complain and try to take other folk with you. <laughs> now, as a servant, help people get what they want. Zig Ziglar, who's a great man who went to be with the Lord this past week, he, he said, you can have anything in life, you can have everything in life you want if you will just help other people get what they want. Jesus put it this way. And if you are not faithful with other people's things, why should you be trusted with things on your own? I like what the Message Bible says. Servanthood is the key to promotion. Watch this. If you're not honest in small jobs, who will put you in charge of the store? It's talking about promotion. Be faithful in little things. Be the best on your job. Work in excellence. Now, here's a situation in the Old Testament that involved uh, Miriam and Aaron, they complained against Moses because Moses married a black woman. They got upset. And they said, Has, had the Lord only spoken through Moses, hadn't he also spoken through us? See, that was their reason. He speaks to us too. I know God speaks to the pastor, but he speaks to me too. We all have, I got the Holy Spirit just like the pastor. Yeah, but you're not placed in that position of authority. Now God has, uh, we're in a dispensation of grace. So stuff that happened to Miriam don't happen to people in the, in the New Testament. But still, if you don't correct your situation, you, you, you will not get promoted. Now, God will give you mercy, but some people will, they, 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 because they complain, they're going to stay in the same place, and they're not going to get promoted until they pass that test. Some folks, they, they hold quiet rebellion. So our rebellious people are not loud. What happened to Miriam? See, 
uh, the Lord heard their complaint. Well, the Lord, the Lord, is, uh, don't he speak to us too? Does he speak only through Moses? Well, the Lord heard their complaint, and he called them on the carpet, said a few things to them. After the Lord rebuked them, judgment came upon Miriam, and she became leprous, as white as snow. See, it's dangerous to speak against God's messengers. The Bible says, do his prophets no harm. The scripture is very clear about this principle. If you don't agree with something, don't speak against it. Leave it alone. One time in the New Testament when the religious leaders made a decision that they, they wanted to kill the disciples, one of the religious leaders, one of the, one of the respected leaders among them, his name was Gamaliel, he rose up and said this. He said, be careful what you do to these men. Because if what they are doing, if, if they're doing this stuff on their own, it'll come to nothing. But if it's of God, you won't be able to do anything about it. And you better not be found fighting against God. See, fighting against God is a behavior I do not recommend. Anybody ever seen God? No. But his representatives are here. And we haven't seen God, but his representatives are here. And you can fight against God by fighting against God's men and God's women that he's placed in authority as ministry gifts. I had a valuable test that I passed. I didn't even know this was a test at the time. I was going to a, a church shortly after I gave my life to the Lord, and uh, I was excited. I was getting, I was growing by leaps and bounds. It was in, in Indianapolis. I was attending a church. I was growing very quickly. I was applying myself to the Word. I mean, I, I, I was all in, fired up about the things of God. And one day, I heard somebody teaching on faith. Changed my life. And I was so excited, I just wanted to tell everybody I knew. I began to have Bible studies in my home. Now, I hadn't yet developed my teaching gift. I, I didn't even know I was called to the ministry, but I would gather my friends around me. We would listen to a tape. And after the tape was over, I'd, I'd ask if anybody had any questions. Okay. So, soon these Bible studies began to expand. And more and more people uh, began to come. And we sooner or later had a house full of people. Uh, I, was I was teaching on faith, ministering the Holy Spirit. People were getting filled with the Spirit. People were getting blessed. And then guess what? The pastor decided he didn't want us to have this Bible study. He didn't authorize it. It was just, and I didn't, I wasn't doing this behind the pastor's back. I was just excited about what I was learning and wanted to share it with other people. And people were getting blessed. I mean, it, it was very clear people were being blessed. Well, the pastor said, shut it down. I didn't want to do it at first. But there was, a, there was an older, wise saint in the group that said, you should shut it down. Why? Because the pastor said to do it. See, myself and Somebody else in the group, we really didn't want to do it, but we listened to wise counsel. This lady was more mature than we were. Now, I was young in the things of God, and looking back at it, see, this was the beginning of my teaching gift began to develop, but this other saint, she was more mature than I was in the things of God. She said, she said we should do what the pastor said. Now, I could have justified it and talked about how God was using the group and people were being, like folks do, people are getting blessed. Here, I can, I can show you these people. This, this per person got filled with the Spirit. This person got filled with the Spirit. This person is growing. This, this, none, none of that stuff mattered. The only thing that mattered was to do what the pastor said to do. It was a test that I needed to pass. Again, the pastor sees the big, big picture. He, he sees things I don't see. He's responsible for the care 
of the sheep. He is responsible for the sheep. And at the end of the day, you know where all those people came from? I didn't get those disciples. Those were his disciples. Those were his sheep. They weren't mine. Okay? And some people have the idea, well, you know, they're really, they, they, they're not his sheep. They're not the pastor's sheep. They're God's sheep. Well, they're both. They're pastor's sheep and they're God's sheep. Because, see, the pastor is an under-shepherd. So they are the pastor's sheep. He said, Pastor, what are you talking about? I'm, I'm trying to help you get promoted. The reason why some of you look at me strange is because you don't see how this relates. You have no clue. That's the reason why you don't volunteer. You know, it doesn't just, but I want to help you. Volunteering, just doing something like that, just saying, hey, Pastor, where do you need me? What do you need? Children's ministry? Need ushers? Somebody on the reception team? What? Where? Media ministry? Where, how can I help? Hey, boy, you hustling during the week trying to get promoted. Just do anything. If I, could, if I could just give some, I could just need to get paid more. If I could just get three more dollars an hour, I'm trying to tell you how to get promoted, but see, you're not, you're not making a relationship. You're not making a correlation. Some of you. I can tell where you're looking at me. I'm blessing you right now, whether you realize it or not. Guess what? I shut that Bible study down. I listened to wisdom. I passed the test to help me to get where I am today. And because of my decision, God was able to promote me and give me greater responsibilities. Amen. See, a lot of folks want more money, but they don't want more responsibilities. When God promotes you, you're going to get more responsibilities. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, you're talking about, well, I want my own business. But some people, their motives are wrong. They're just trying to make money. You know what a business is? It's, it's, it, you're in a service business. Well, I want to open up a you know, restaurant. I'm, I'm selling food. No, not really. What you're doing is serving. And boy, Christians should be the best business owners there are because they get this principle. This is the reason why you get so, so much service is very bad in businesses because they don't understand they're in the service business. That's why sometimes they don't pay you any, any mind when you walk in. They don't, they don't understand they're in the service business. Selfishness drives a lot of people. They'll do anything to get ahead in life because they're selfish. It's all about me. Make sure you have the right motives. Philippians um, New Century Version, verses 2 and 3 says, When you do things, do not let selfishness or pride be your guide. Instead, be humble and give more honor to others than to yourselves. Do not be interested only in your own life, but be interested in the lives of others. Don't be guided by selfishness and pride. Be humble. Give more honor to others than to yourself. Don't be interested only in your own life, but be interested in the lives of others. The Message Bible says in verse 3, don't push your way to the front. Don't sweet talk your way to the top. Put yourself aside and help others get ahead. Because guess what? When you help others get what they want, God is going to help you get what you want. Let God promote you. And don't try to promote, to promote yourself. It is required, the Bible says, in stewards that one be found faithful. See, as a steward, a steward is another word for a manager. When somebody gives you a responsibility to manage something, See, you need to prove yourself worthy of trust. And if you're faithful in a little, 
God will promote you and put you in charge of more stuff. Promotion not only will get you more increase, it will get you more responsibility. The more uh, promotion happens in your life, the more opportunities you'll have to serve. The more faithful you are in the things of God, the more God will give you to do. And the Bible says in Proverbs 26, see, a lot of people, he said, most people will, will um, proclaim their own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. Faithful people are hard to find. Proverbs 29, uh, Proverbs 25, 19 says, Confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like a bad tooth and a foot out of joint. You ever had a bad tooth? That's what it feels like when you put confidence in somebody who's unfaithful. You don't know what they're going to do. A good servant carries out his responsibilities without complaining about it. We are to do all things without murmuring or complaining. Peter says, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. A servant is humble. And at the right time, he will what? He will lift you up in honor. Galatians 6, 9 from the Message Bible says, so let's not allow ourselves to get fatigued doing good. At the right time, we will harvest a good crop if we don't give up or quit. There is, listen, there's a right time and a right season for, for promotion to come. Stay humble, and if, if you stay humble and remain faithful, your time will come. But there's so many people doing it the wrong way, living for themselves. God wants us to live for him. But some people are so selfish, they are uh, living for themselves rather than for him. We are laborers. The Bible says we are laborers together with God. In 2 Corinthians 5.15, it says, and he died for all. How many of you know Jesus died for you? Yeah. He died for all. That those who live should no longer live for themselves but for him who died for them and rose again. We're not to live for ourselves. And not only that, not only should we live for him, but we should commit ourselves to those that God has placed in authority as ministers of the gospel. 2 Corinthians 8, 5, from the Amplified, listen to this. Nor was this gift of theirs merely the contribution. This is referring to the Corinthians when they, they were giving. Nor was this gift of theirs merely the contribution, not or, or, or that we expected. Nor was this gift of theirs merely the contribution that we expected. But first, watch this, they gave themselves to the Lord. Well, I'm going to follow the Lord. I'm not going to follow no man. They, they gave themselves to the Lord, watch it, and to who? And to us. Another place, Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. You don't follow anybody blindly, but you, you, you follow uh, in, in ministry, you follow the ministers and men and women of God as they follow Christ. He said they gave themselves to the Lord and to us as his agents by the will of God, entirely disregarding their personal interests. They gave as much as they possibly could. Do you do that in your local church? They gave as much as they possibly could, having put themselves at our disposal to be directed by the will of God. That's what you do when you say, Pastor, how do you want me to serve? Direct me by the will of God. Why are you at some church? There's a reason. I was talking to a minister, and he said, a lot of people don't even know why they're in church. It's some folk they don't even know. It's important for me. Now, this, this guy, he got revelation on it. I may have him come in and minister. I was interested in what he was talking about. He said, no, he said, most people don't even know why they're in church. 
Why, why are you sitting out there? Do you know why? You should know. There's a reason. Why are you at Summit? Do I put a gun to your head and make you come and sit here today? There's a reason why you're here. If you're here anyway, why don't you go all the way? Why don't you go all the way in your service, in your commitment, in your dedication? No strings attached. Your presence is heaven to me. The singer said, that's why I'm in Summit, so pastor don't have to sing. <laughs> Be faithful in serving in the local church. Do what you ask to do without murmuring, without complaining. Look what the NIV says in 2 Corinthians 8, 5. I love this. Never seen this before until this week. And they exceeded our expectations. Ooh, don't a pastor love when somebody come up and say, and you could say this about them, that they exceeded. I mean, yeah, they're serving, but they're just over the top. They exceeded my expectations. Those folks are rare, but they do exist, thank God. I thank God I have, I, have, I have people that I'm surrounded with, they exceed my expectations. Make it easy for me. Huh? When your pastor's eating dinner and, and your, your, your name flashes across their mind, you, you want a smile to go across your pastor's face, not, oh, Lord. You don't, don't want to have to cast that down. Hello. And they exceeded our expectations. They gave themselves first of all to the Lord and then by the will of God also to us. Just a few more things. Don't just do the minimum requirements. Go above and beyond. Exceed the expectations of your leaders. If you do that, God will be sure to bless you. Don't look for it. Or, or, don't look for or seek for praise or pat on the back from your boss, from your supervisor, from your manager, from your pastor. Serve in excellence and look to the Lord for promotion. The Bible tells us very clearly where, don't miss this one. If you've been asleep, wake up on this. Know where promotion comes from. The Bible says, it, the promotion, it says, for not from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south, come promotion and lifting up. That means that promotion comes from the Lord. Don't look to man for, for promotion. Don't look to your boss, your supervisor. Don't look to man for promotion. Some people work so hard to promote themselves. Just relax and rest in God. Slow down, chill out, get yourself some tea or something. Jesus said, my yoke is easy. Do your work as to the Lord. Work for God. When you're str listen, when you're struggling, that's an indication that you're doing something wrong. It's time to evaluate what you're doing and make mid-course adjustments. Maybe you in a, 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 a mode right now where you're just stagnant. You're not moving. You're not moving forward. You're just kind of standing still right now. Well, work to improve your serve. I said work to improve your serve. Amen. The Bible tells us we're to judge ourselves. How are you doing? This is, this is the time to, uh, that I'm asking you to judge yourself. We should always endeavor to improve. See, when you judge yourself, you won't be judged, the Bible says. The only person you qualify to judge is not me, not your boss, not your supervisor, but yourself. See? <clears throat> Fix this in your mind, that promotion comes from God alone. 
Because some people, they get impatient with God. Listen, your time is coming. If you're faithful, if you're humble, if you keep doing good, don't try to rush the process. Don't try to help God. Some people, they want promotion so bad that they will compromise their integrity to get it. Never compromise. Never lower your standards to get ahead. Don't try to step over people to get where you want to go. You don't make your candle brighter by putting out somebody else's. Don't go to your, your supervisor telling them how, how you deserve it and how this other person is lazy and they don't work and you work more than them. And I, don't do that. I always choose to do the right things even when the wrong things are happening on your job. Even when it seems like nobody's noticing you, God is noticing you, and he will promote you. The Bible says that he's not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love that you've shown toward his name. God sees and he promotes. The Lord is watching everything you do. He don't miss a thing. The, listen, the Lord don't miss a thing. Make sure he catches you doing the right thing. When you humble yourself, you will be exalted. And when you see other people cheating to get ahead, stay focused and you do what's right. When you walk with God, payday is coming. Do your work as unto the Lord, and God will always pay up. Your job is not your source. God is your source. When you humble yourself under the mighty power of God, he will lift you up at the right time, and he is never, ever late. And remember that God is not limited to working through your boss or supervisor to promote you. God has all kind of ways to get you promoted. He might move your supervisor out or move you out to a higher place or another job. See, your job is not to figure out how. Your job is to trust God and stay faithful. Do everything he tells you to do. Be obedient to his word. And I tell you, he will promote you. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for helping us to be faithful, to do the right thing, to be obedient, to follow your plan and purpose. Thank you, Lord, at the right time, you will raise us up. Lord, we humble yourselves under your mighty power. We are your servants. Thank you, Lord. If you're here today and you've never made Jesus Lord of your life, I want to invite you to make him Lord today. Jesus died on the cross for you. If you're watching online, understand that Jesus loves you. Doesn't make any difference what your background is, how you were raised, what religion you were raised under. None of that matters. Jesus died for you. And there's a reason why you're watching this right now. And if you want to make Jesus Lord of your life, it's very easy to do. The reason why it's so easy is because Jesus has already done all the work. He went to the cross. He took your sins at Calvary. The guilt, the, the condemnation, the um, separation that you feel from God if you feel like you really and I'm really not close to God you're not going to get close to God until you make him Lord of your life until you accept Jesus as your personal Savior and Lord that void that that big hole in your heart will not uh, will not go away until you make Jesus Lord but when you do the good news is he'll fill that void he's the only one who can the Bible says, as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. I want to lead you in a prayer. The reason why it's easy, as easy as praying a simple prayer is because Jesus has already done the work. He's already gone to the cross. He's already died for your sins. And all you've got to do is receive him by saying, praying this very simple prayer. What do you got to lose? Find out 
for yourself how your life will change. Repeat these words after me. Say, Dear God, I believe that you sent Jesus to die on the cross for me. I believe that you raised Jesus from the dead for my justification. Therefore, I confess Jesus Christ as my personal Savior and Lord. Jesus, come into my heart. Make me new. Thank you, Father, that I'm now born again in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, I want to be the first to congratulate you and welcome you to the family of God. Praise God. If you pray that prayer for the first time, what I'd like for you to do is fill out, uh, I want you to look um, on your seat, and there is a, uh, or by your seat, there is a card. This is our connection card. What I'd like for you to do is fill this card out. Check the box here at the bottom that says, I accepted Jesus as my personal Savior and Lord. If you're watching online and you pray that prayer for the first time, let somebody know. Click the live uh, prayer button. There's a green button that says live prayer. Click that button. You'll go into a, an area where you can uh, chat with a person. Let that person in the chat room know your decision. Because what I want to do is I want to give you some information to um, help you understand what happened to you when you prayed that prayer. You became a new creation. You're a brand new man or a brand new woman, brand new boy, brand new girl. What, listen, you, you, you're a brand new person. You're a member of the family of God. I also want to give you some uh, important first steps on what to do now that you become a Christian. All right? So uh, for those of you that prayed that prayer for the first time, I want you to raise your hand. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, that's the first time you prayed that prayer that I led you in that salvation prayer. Okay. All right. I see your hand. You may put your hand down. What I'd like for you to do is reach into your seat pocket and pull out one of these cards. It's um, right there at your seat. And fill this card out. What I'd like for you to do when you fill it out, check the box that says, I accepted Jesus as my personal Savior and Lord. And what I want you to do after you do that Go ahead and fill it out now as I'm, as I'm speaking. Drop it in the offering bucket when it passes your row in a few moments. And I want to give you that information that I spoke to you about to help you understand what happened to you when you prayed that prayer and also give you some important first steps on what to do now that you become a Christian. Hallelujah. All right, everybody give God praise. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.